So I've recently self-published a book and I thought I'd make a series that goes from point A to point Z. This first video will be about the format and how you can get started writing a novel. If you've already started writing a novel, you probably know everything I'm about to say, but I thought I would literally start from the very basics of, you know, do you use paper and pen? Do you use a typewriter? Do you use a computer? Now, you're probably going to know my recommendation, but I'm going to cover them all and just go over the cons and the perks of each one, just to give you an overview, if you don't know, of what might work best for you. Now, a little disclaimer, most of it is my opinion, so take everything with a pinch of salt, and if something seems to be working better for you than it did for me, stick with it. So, the first format I'm going to talk about are typewriters, and they are very enjoyable to use. The, all the clanking and the noises and the little sort of thing as you get into a new line, it's all really, really nice. And generally, when you think about typewriters, it's you're thinking of like a nice, cozy room or den, little writer's den. You've got a jumper on, it's raining outside, and there's like pitter patterns on the window. And you've got a hot chocolate or a coffee or a cup of tea, and you know, it's getting dark outside, and you're going to write that novel on the typewriter that you've always wanted to write. And it's a lovely thought, but just the typewriter, they just tend to be a little bit slow. So I would just, you know, keep the lighter stuff for typewriting. If you're going to do letters or short stories or flash, how about flash fiction, use a typewriter. But if you're going to start doing like full length novels, it it starts to become a question of like how sensible is it? You know, if you write like a hundred thousand word novel with a typewriter, you've only got one copy. So you don't have any backups. If you want backups, you're gonna to have to go down to the library, do photocopying or scanning. And editing is of course going to be a bit of a pain because you're gonna be scribbling over it all and then retyping the whole thing up. Uh, I suppose as long as you're not worried about sort of time constraints, go for typewriting. But for me, where I want to use the thing that will help me finish my novel as quick as possible, I'll leave the typewriter for the light letters, flash fiction if I really, really want to. And then sort of either use pen and paper and computer for writing bigger stuff. The entry point for typewriters varies from free online. You can find typewriters for free to really, really expensive. Obviously the condition, you know, there's a little bit of maintenance involved with typewriters. And they're not that portable because they're quite heavy as well. So my general recommendation is, yeah, don't use them for novel writing. So the second format, which is probably by far the most universally accessible format, which is pen and paper or pencil and paper, which is fast, cheap. You can get it in all sorts of formats in terms of you can have a tiny little notebook that you carry around with you. You can scribble stuff down in all your ideas, bits and pieces like that. Or you can have like a, a bigger notepad where you start drafting up your manuscript in. There is no learning curve with pen and paper, there's no software you have to use, there's no maintenance with it besides sharpening your pencil or getting a new pen or putting new ink in a pen if you're going for a fancy pen. And overall I find handwriting just it flows a little bit faster than typing so uh, you know just get your thoughts out more fluidly from pen to paper than you can on keyboard to screen. But again, the downside to handwriting is that you've only got one copy, like the typewriter. Uh, well, considerably, maybe handwriting might be a little bit worse because you have to then decipher your own handwriting, which I find is a task all of its own. But yeah, if you want backups, if you're doing handwriting or if you want to share it, it's again, you're going to have to photocopy or scan with either a printer that you have or go down to the local library. But yeah, for pen and paper, you know, I recommend keeping a little notebook. I probably wouldn't do the bulk of a novel on pen and paper because, again, it's just you come up against the same barriers as you do with the typewriter. You know, no backups. You can't edit it easily. You're going to have to rewrite it all again. You have to decipher your write, handwriting. And if you want to share it with anyone, you, you know, you're going you're gonna to have to photocopy it to send it out. So personal recommendation, excellent for notes. Now in the same vein, now we're going to talk about computers, you can get the two-in-ones or the tablets where you can use a pen and essentially get the same sort of flow you would get from writing on paper, but it obviously saves to the internet, so you've got backups, you can share it, you can email it, and it, it generally it's just, I find it a lot more comfortable to have it saved on there than just on a bit of paper. Although saying that, you know, generally having both is always a good sort of rule of thumb to have just in case anything happens with your computer. 
So the last and recommended format is uh, using a computer to write your novel. So there are loads of different types of computers, but in short, any computer will write for writing a novel, any, any computer, whether it's Apple, Microsoft, Android, Linux, every single one of them has a word processor that you can use to write a novel in. And I recommend computers over the other two just because you can edit, you can search, you can share, you can print. It just, it's, it makes writing a novel so much quicker being able to do that. Now I'm gonna go over the different types of computers you can buy, which are desktops, which are the big old fashioned sort of ones where there's a tower, a separate screen, keyboard and mouse. For that you obviously need desk space, they're always plugged in. Um, they don't really move, so you're going to have you know an actual office if you have one of those. Uh, the next one is laptops, which are portable because they have a battery and you can take them where you wherever you want. They come in different sizes, generally from 11 to 17 inches, depending on what you want. Obviously, the big ones are a lot heavier. With laptops, you can actually get ones that are called two-in-ones, and they have the touchscreen on, which allows for either touch input and or pen input um, it varies from model to model and they sort of so you can get the handwriting experience and also the typing experience next is tablets which generally speaking i wouldn't recommend for writing at all unless you can get a keyboard attachment for it, an accessory that you can plug in that makes typing a lot faster instead of using like the virtual keyboard on it. Having said that, using a larger tablet other than your mobile is always far better with the bigger screen. But mobiles are of course, as I mentioned before, handy for note taking either at lunch or wherever you are if you've got a spark of an idea. But generally mobiles aren't perfect for writing whole novels on. And price wise between all of these, um, they all vary from free to really expensive, depending on the age, uh, you know, if you look on eBay, Gumtree, the Friday ad, Craigslist, stuff like that, you could probably find a free computer and it would do the trick for writing because writing is not an intensive task for your computer. So that really only applies if you're just writing. If, if you're going down a self-publishing route and maybe the traditional route, I don't really know the ins and outs of that, uh, you're going to need something that's probably a little bit more powerful because you're going to end up making marketing stuff and if you've got a old laptop or an old computer, it might not be up to the task. So behind me, I've got an Aero 15X, which is, is quite an older laptop now. It's a few years old, it's dated, uh, but it still does the task. And essentially it's powerful enough to do stuff like this on screen here, which is marketing stuff that I made for my book Displaced that's just been released. And basically if I had an older computer, it would have struggled creating things like this. If I just picked up the cheapest one on the block, I wouldn't have stood a chance making this stuff. So it's important if you're going to be buying a computer now, think down the line, are you going to be doing this? Maybe you can save for it, buy a cheap computer now, or try and get hold of a free computer now that can just write for you. And then keep your eye for anything that pops up that's more capable. But yeah, that's just something to have in the back of your mind if you're thinking about buying a computer. What will you need it for in a few years? Will you have finished your novel in a few years? Would you want to start making marketing content for it? If so, what would you be making? Will it be relying on things that are heavy for a computer to use? So do a little bit of research. You'll probably be able to pick up ones like this that are a few years old for fairly cheap now because of how fast technology tends to move these days. Right, that's it. So I hope they haven't rambled on too much. If I've confused you with computers, feel free to write any questions in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help out. I'm constantly looking at new tech and wanting to buy it. But generally, if you do a quick search on the internet with a certain brand or certain computer that you're looking at, you'll find out very quickly uh, about the reviews and what it's capable of. In the next video, I'll be discussing software and the software that I used along with some other alternatives as well. But yeah, that's it for this video. Cheers for watching.